So in terms of file uploads, what I have up here is a code file, my copy-paste approach, right? Now, as I said, it, it doesn't complete everything you probably would need to do, but it gets the basics in place, okay? And it'll be a learning moment <laughs> as we go through it as well, right? So as I suggested, homework last week, grab the solution from last term's HR project, and we want to add a single picture, okay, to the applicant, as well as multiple file uploads for resumes, cover letters, things like that, right? So that's what we're going to do, okay? So guess what? I already have grabbed it from the uh, lab file share. Let's go into Prog 1612 under CPA lab files, and you'll find it there. Uh, I haven't changed anything. I, I should have up, you know, those darn dates, right? They're no longer valid, right? Because it's supposed to be in the, and that won't matter because the seeding, I've already got data in the database. I didn't remove the database. So the fact that the seeding fails won't hurt anything as far as I'm concerned. So what are we going to do? Well, following my copy paste file, we need three, kind of three new classes to do, the, to do it the way I envision, right? So if I right click models and say add class. The first class I'm going to add is to hold the actual picture, the image of the applicant, right? So I decided to call it applicant image. Okay, so I have an applicant image class. So we already have the applicant, right? How many images are we going to have? One, right? So this is a perfect example of, instead of storing this data right inside the applicant, I'm moving it out here into a subordinate entity in a one-to-one -one relationship. So the content of the class is going to look something like this. Following, of course, I'll have to get some red underlines here. Okay, so my control period friend, thank you for data annotations as well. I need one more for the data annotations dot schema. Now I have those namespaces, it knows what I'm talking about. So this is following the exact one-to-one -one paradigm that we talked about last week, right? So this primary key here, it won't be an identity, it will inherit its value from the related parent in the one-to-many, or the one-to-one, -one. <laughs> bite my tongue, the one-to-one -one relationship, right? So it's both the key and the foreign key, getting the ID of the applicant, okay? And it will contain this huge byte array, right? That's where all the massive amount of data is for the image itself. Also the MIME type, so we make sure that we can reproduce the image with the same, if it's a JPEG versus PNG and so on, it'll know about it. And just for the nav other part of the navigation property, the public virtual applicant applicant, right? That's normally part of any child, okay? <coughs> so the difference is that our primary key is also the foreign key, giving it a one-to-one -one relationship. Any questions about that? That's pretty much what we talked about last week. Okay, so let's add now another class. We're going to have multiple files, right? So first time I did this, I confess, I just called my class file. E -e 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 -e. Okay, what's wrong with that? There's all kinds of places where file is a keyword in the system, right? There's system.io.file and so on and so forth. So it started to yell at me all over the place. Oh, stop yelling at me. So I just was really lazy. I was in a hurry because I just made this code up yesterday afternoon in between two classes. So I call it a file. <laughs> okay. In hindsight, it wasn't the best name, <laughs> but it works. Okay. So this represents a file. How about that? There you go. So, now, what relationship is there between an applicant and a file? Yes. That's right. An applicant can have many files. So it's a one-to-many. So guess what? This looks exactly the same as all the other one-to-many's we've ever done, right? We have our foreign key, our applicant ID, and our public virtual applicant applicant, right? And our primary key is our good old integer identity just called ID. Exactly the same as we've done over and over. Because it really is just a child in a one-to-many relationship. The only thing that's a little tricky here, or twisty, let's add my uh, using there, uh, is the fact that I decided, instead of having the big byte array, that huge amount of data, instead of storing it right in here, I'm going to shovel it off in a subordinate one-to-one. -one. My motivation for that is so that I can dot include my collection of A files, <laughs> right, in my applicant and maybe show a list of all the files that are uploaded for a given applicant without having to pull all the actual file content, the large amount of data, right? 
So that means I'm going to need yet one more class. Guess what it's going to be called? File content. <laughs> Which is why this is underlined. I haven't created that class yet, right? So one more new class. Add class called file content. And there we go. In my file content class, this is once again a one-to-one, -one, right? As a related subordinate entity to file or a file, right? So this control periods for annotation and annotation schema, right? So again, the same thing, the both the key, primary key and foreign key, right? So we'll inherit the ID from the corresponding a file, right? And notice we have a public virtual, a file, a file, okay? I decided that since I'm storing the huge byte array in here, that I might as well throw the MIME type, because I'll never need to know the MIME type unless I'm concerned with the content of the file anyway. So why have it in the other class, right? It might as well stay in here, because I don't need it unless I need the byte array. All right, that's it. That's my three new classes, okay? This one is a classic child in a one-to-many, but it has its own subordinate entity holding the content separately. And then the image holds the image content separately from the applicant. All right. Now, obviously, these all relate back to the applicant. So we're not going to get away without making some changes to applicant as well. So let me come up here, find the applicant class. Right. Uh, I often add new things down near the bottom. Okay. So we already have some eye collections here, uh, child applications collection and skills, right? That's in that many to many. But I need to add two more, okay? So in order to hold the picture, I'll have a virtual applicant image, right? That way I can do, do a dot include if I want and then grab and get the actual picture along with the applicant if I want to show it on the screen. And Guess what? It's a one-to-many, so we have my I collection of A file objects, and I can be a little lazy. I can just call it files. <laughs> I don't have to call it A files now, right? Because files itself is not a keyword anywhere, so I can just use it. And it's a little clearer in my code when I go applicant.files, if you ask me, rather than me looking like a... No, no I'm not going to say that. Okay. All right. So that's the basic changes here, but I'm not finished. For the first time, okay, exciting. For the first time, it really is important to do this. I've talked about this in the constructor of the class. Whenever you have a child collection inside of a class, it's good practice to instantiate it to an empty collection, right, as you construct the object itself. It's the first time that it really does make a difference. You will definitely get an error if you miss it, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing we've done with these others, collections. Okay. So this.files is a new hash set of a file object. Right? The reason why you'll get an error if we miss this step is later on we're going to grab an applicant and we want to do dot .add to the files collection. You can't do dot .add on a null collection. And we would crash and burn. <laughs> Right? If we don't actually instantiate it to a null or empty collection, sorry, to an empty collection, and if we left it as null. So I've always preached about this, but it's the first time that you'll actually get an error if you don't do it. Okay. Any questions about all those changes? All right. We're not quite done. Because remember I mentioned last week in our discussion that if you want to, because our conventions are, you know, set the way they are, if you want cascade delete, and the truth is each and every one of these we would want to be deleted. Right, with the parent object. So if we delete an applicant, we want the picture deleted automatically, so we want cascade delete. If we delete an applicant, we want all the resumes and cover letters they've uploaded, right? All those files, they should all be deleted as well. Well, that's contrary to the convention that we put in place. And of course, same thing with the one-to-one -one for file-to-file -file content. If we delete a file, we would want to delete the content as well, right? So to change all that, we have to go where? Where did we talk about making those changes? Right in our DB context, okay? Down here where we overload the, override I should say, the on model creating. That's where we took out those conventions. We had a quick discussion last week that inside here we can use what is called that fluent API language, right? To specify more clearly than is possible sometimes with just our annotations alone 
exactly how the relationships between the entities work, right? So I have three to put in, okay? Probably should have changed the order. <laughs> Maybe I will. I should probably, I'll put this one at the top because the other two kind of relate to each other. Okay. All right, so the first one, this is useful code for you to tuck away in your back pocket because remember we have a standard one-to-many relationship between an applicant and a file. Our convention, normally we remove the one-to-many cascade delete because we prefer, generally speaking, to be prevented from deleting a parent, like a doctor that has patients, right? But what if you really want that cascade delete? Well, here's the answer right here. All you have to do is, with that convention removed, you come into the individual case then as an exception and say, well, guess what? I have an applicant that has many files, right? And each file has a required applicant, okay? But I want will cascade delete true, right? Now that's specifying for this one particular relationship, despite this convention we've removed up here, when we delete an applicant, delete all the related files, okay? That's not a special one-to-one -one case. This is useful to know whenever you need to make that exception. The other two are specifically for the one-to-ones, right? So when I delete an applicant, the applicant image gets deleted as well. And if I delete a file, <laughs> then the file content object that relates to it will be deleted as well, right? Okay, so that's basically it for in there. But you know, while we're here, let's talk about DB sets. We added three new classes. Do we need a DB set for any one of those? If so, which one? Ooh, there's a hint. Which one of those three models would we probably want to create a DB set for? File, yeah, that's right, because you know, the uh, image and, you know, the ones in a one-to-one, -one, you don't really need a separate DB set. Because really, you think of it, you're just taking some properties and shoving them off to the side. But really, it's just like, almost like a, uh, a virtual extension of a class. It doesn't ever really need its own DB set. But files, okay, is just a standard child collection of applicant, right? And we will eventually definitely require um, the ability to maintain them, right? So we'll need its own controller, right? Some actions so we can delete files, okay? Maybe update them, update maybe a file description, things like that, right? Remember back when we created a, a file, we added a string for description, right? Because probably, you know, you know, we don't want to just rely on the file name. So if later on the applicant is going to choose which copy, which version of the resume to apply for a particular job, remember they might have one that's tailored for one skill and a different one tailored for a different skill. Well, if you rely on the file name to distinguish them, then that's probably not very good because, <laughs> you know, if you get a, a, an application with a resume that the file is named, this is the version of my resume that's good for such and such kind of job. <laughs> and it's probably kind of a giveaway, right? So you probably want a separate description where they could put information like that. Anyway, all right, so back to uh, the entity. So we probably do want to be able to edit and maintain files in its own controller later on. So that's something we would add here as well. All right, so that's basically everything we have to have here. But you know what? We talked about for fun, the whole idea of having a schema. We have existing tables that are in the DBO schema. But you'll see if I actually, just for the fun of it, throw this in here anywhere. Okay, we'll call our model builder to have a default schema. I figured HR for our HR application, right? And you'll see as we uh, scaffold our migration that all the existing tables that will switch the schema to HR and any new ones we create will just create them with HR as the schema. Okay, that's it. We're basically ready okay, to actually do our uh, migrations now. That's all the changes we need to our model. Right? Now, again, ignore the validation errors we'll get in our seed data. It really doesn't matter, the data's already there. I'm not gonna take time to fix the dates and pretend that they're in the future or anything like that, okay? All right, okay, well I can close all these just to clean things up a bit. One thing I will need, I, for some reason in this copy, I didn't save my usual my little empty, simple text file with all my commands, so I'll have to make it from scratch. So add migration, the configuration type name, right? So if I come to the actual HR migrations, grab configuration, 
Here's the safest place to get the proper namespace. And then dot configuration, of course. And I'll copy it just so I don't make a typo and spell it wrong. I'm going to push enter here. Of course, it will prompt me, as we know. We have to have a name, so it'll come up and say, wait a second, you know, give me a name. So I'm going to call it file uploads. Right? Uh, it spelled that terribly, but that's okay. <laughs> ah! Ah! I don't care! <laughs> All right. I should have done a build first. See if I had any build errors. Oh, looks like I got away with it this time. <laughs> I had build errors last time because I had a couple typos in my, uh, I actually edited my text file without doing it in Visual Studio and made some typos. Anyway, all right, so let's just notice here, it's kind of interesting to see, move table, okay, to a new schema, right? So all the existing tables, it's put into this new schema, and all the new tables we're creating are just created with the schema as well. Kind of neat to see that, eh? So it's a good trick going forward to allow you to share a database among different sort of applications. So we have our applicant image. Again, it's in our one-to-one, our, uh, -one, right? The primary key and the foreign key are the same. Our A file is your typical uh, child, okay? So the uh, primary key is just the ID and so on. And then we have our file content in the one-to-one -one back. But notice all of the cascades, cascade delete is set to true. Right? Thanks to our Fluent API that we put in. Okay, so now I'll just update the database. We'll bring back that last command, add update database. And of course I'll get some red on the screen because of the validation errors that I have in my seed data, but don't worry about the man behind the curtain. We'll just click that quick and get that up. <laughs> <laughs> we know what that's about. We aren't going to take time to fix it, right? That's okay. All right, so that gets us ready to go. So we have all our changes made. Now we just have controllers and views to worry about. Okay, I'll stop and start the video just so we can.